As part of the PharmD curriculum at the URI College of Pharmacy, hour-long 3D modeling labs are given once each semester to highlight a specific topic in medicinal chemistry. The labs are part of a weekly three-hour laboratory course taught jointly between pharmacy practice faculty, pharmacy residents, and P4 pharmacy students on academic rotation. The purpose of the laboratory course is to provide a setting for pharmacy students to develop soft skills and hard skills necessary for the profession. Soft skills include the ability to work as part of a team in clinical exams and the ability to communicate appropriately when counseling a patient. Hard skills include blood pressure monitoring and vaccine administration. 3D modeling labs provide a setting for group learning of medicinal chemistry, encouraging students to better understand the mechanism of action and therapeutic implications of specific drugs. The labs are taught within a specially constructed suite equipped with computer workstations and are administered in small group sessions of 12 to 16 students each. Two major technologies are employed to enhance understanding of a given topic, 3D computer modeling and 3D printing. These technologies give students an opportunity to become more hands-on with the material, encouraging retention of the information being discussed. The fall semester of P2 year is focused primarily on infectious and respiratory disease. The lab for this semester was based off a Nobel Prize winning publication discussing the binding of several antibiotics to the large subunit of a bacterial ribosome. The lab utilizes a computer model of the active site cut out of the large subunit, which students manipulate over the course of the lab. The lab examines two specific antibiotics and highlights two important concepts in infectious disease pharmacotherapy. The first concept is that differences in the structure of antibiotics can affect their binding to an active site. And the second is that antibiotic drug resistance can develop as a result of mutations within an active site. The antibiotics examined in this lab are classified as protein synthesis inhibitors, which function by blocking the transfer of tRNA molecules between the A site and P site of a bacterial ribosome. This halts the growth of polypeptide chains, preventing the biological process of translation. The first antibiotic examined in this lab is erythromycin, a member of the macrolide class. Telithromycin is similar, but contains a ketone group in place of the cladino sugar on erythromycin. Telithromycin is considered a ketolide for this reason. In terms of design, both drugs share common structures. They are both characterized by a large lactone-containing ring consisting of 14 carbons, as well as a disosamine sugar important for binding to an adenine RNA nucleotide within the active site. However, each antibiotic features key differences which have an impact on their affinity for the target. As mentioned before, erythromycin contains a cladino sugar not present on telithromycin. Erythromycin only participates in one hydrogen bond in the active site, between an oxygen on its disosamine ring and a nitrogen on an adenine nucleotide in the active site. The cladino sugar does not participate in any appreciable bonding. A simplified 3D representation of the active site shows the close proximity of the oxygen and nitrogen moieties in question. The main difference with telithromycin is that it contains an alkyl aryl side chain that branches from two carbons in the lactone ring. This side chain participates in a strong hydrogen bonding interaction, as well as pi bonding interactions, with the cytosine RNA nucleotide in the active site. The interaction between the disosamine sugar on the drug and the adenine nucleotide in the active site is preserved in telithromycin as well. The alkyl aryl side chain is planar in 3D space, which facilitates the aforementioned pi stacking interactions with the cytosine nucleotide. This is in contrast with erythromycin, which is unable to provide strong interactions due to its less favorable conformation and proximity with the cytosine group. This illustration summarizes the relevant interactions of the antibiotics in the active site. Both antibiotics participate in hydrogen bonding with the adenine nucleotide in the active site, 
but only telithromycin has additional interactions with the cytosine nucleotide via its alkyl aryl extension. This allows for a tenfold increase in telithromycin's binding affinity over erythromycin. In the lab, the two antibiotics are superimposed in both the computer models and 3D printed models to illustrate similarities and differences in binding. The alkyl aryl side chain is distinguished on the printed models via a yellow color, as well as a space filling representation, which allows students to better visualize this interaction. Mutations can occur in key RNA nucleotides within the macrolide active site, causing changes in the binding affinity of these antibiotics. One important observed mutation involves the substitution of the adenine nucleotide in the active site to guanine. Guanine contains an amine group shifted relative to adenine, bringing the nucleotide in closer proximity to the drug. In the modeling software, this concept is illustrated by artificially mutating the nucleotide in question from adenine to guanine. Students can clearly see the steric clash that occurs between the nucleotide and the drug when switching between adenine and guanine in the software. In reality, the antibiotics can compensate for this by slightly shifting their position in the active site, though this results in a 10,000-fold decrease in binding affinity. The final section of this video will go over the process for preparing a model for 3D printing. A preparation of a model of the Zika virus will be shown in this example. Structure data can be generated from a variety of scientific techniques, most commonly X-ray crystallography. This particular model of the virus was generated using cryo-electron microscopy, or cryo-EM. After structures are published, they are stored on online databases and can be viewed for free. The major source for protein structure data is the RCSB Protein Data Bank, or PDB for short. Each individual structure on this website is associated with a four-character code, which can be used to access structural data via molecular viewers. There are many free viewers available, but the program Chimera is a strong choice for use in preparing protein models for 3D printing. PDB data usually appears as a ball and stick form, or basic ribbon form, when brought into a molecular viewer which can make it hard to distinguish between protein and relevant ligands. This model of an opioid receptor clearly demonstrates this issue. The structure can be manipulated in the viewer using console commands and simple drop-down menus to create a printable object. Certain amino acids, ligands, or even individual atoms can be freely colored to communicate a specific point. Models can also be represented using different options, including a surface. Ribbon and surface representations are ideal for 3D printing. In this example, several small monosaccharides have been colored on the virus to highlight important sites of glycosylation. These sites distinguish Zika from other flaviviruses. The final model's monosaccharides are colored red and also feature colored and surface individual subunits to communicate the virus's patchwork-like structure. Of note, Structural supports can be added within the program to improve the strength of given models. Supports may be necessary for certain models to survive the 3D printing process. These are particularly useful if printing ribbon models. Models are imported into the printing software, where final adjustments can be made. When the printer is started, the software cuts the object into layers, and applies ink and binder layer by layer until the object is completed. For reference, the 3D printer at the URI College of Pharmacy utilizes an inkjet color system that can produce millions of different colors. This makes it ideal for producing models of drugs and proteins, where several colors may be needed to communicate a given concept. Depending on the size of a model, printing time can last as little as a few hours to over half a day. After a print is completed, the model will be buried by unused powder within the printing bed. A vacuum system is built into the printer, which can be used to unearth the model. After enough powder has been removed, the model is transferred to a depowdering station built into the printer. The station has a built-in nozzle that blows pressurized air, allowing for the cleaning of any residual powder. 
Notice how an opening has been built into the model, which allows for any powder inside the model to be drained or blown out. After the powder has been completely removed, the model is taken to a post-processing station where a resin is poured over it. This resin strengthens the model and adds definition to the coloring. After the model has been completely covered in resin, it is placed on a drying bed for an hour or two for completion. 